Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome to the first episode of Crash Landing with Light. See here, we are abandoned on a desolate planet, and even our fuel tanks have ruptured. Not a good start. So what we're going to do is patch up that fuel tank such that it doesn't light us on fire and, you know, kill us in horrific ways. Once we've got that patched up, we can look into assessing our situation. Okay, that should do for now. We'll do a better assessment of that later, after we know what it is that we've got and uh, what it is that we need. Uh, first off, there's no lighting. Whole lot of bad news everywhere. We've got a spanner. Woo uh, don't span the box. Got some food, some batteries, a sieve. Ooh, I do love myself a sieve. This'll get us pretty much everything that we need for the rest of the game, probably. Um, well, I suppose there'll be a few things we might need other than that. Ooh, a gun. And some ammo. Ooh, let's take all the ammo just to be safe. Yeah. Needle guns aren't particularly powerful, but you know, it's a whole lot better than nothing. I am sweating. Let's check the book. I am IMPA. Hello, IMPA. Yeah, we'll come back and read that when we're not in the middle of dying. Okay, so what we need. Fluid transposers. We saw those hanging out in this wall. Grab and grab. Okay, Impa, give us some water and a camel pack. Ooh, I do like a good camel pack. Okay, we just chuck the water in with our camel pack to fill it up. And then put it on our back. And then we can slurp as we wander around. What's next, Impa? Dirt. We definitely need dirt. Generally get this from uh, composting things in the barrel. If you played Agrarian Skies, that's basically step one. I have a feeling it's the same step one here. For now we need dust, bone meal, and water. Uh, before we deal with Impa, I think we need to set up a perimeter. Because we've got no protection here. Whole lot of nothing. So let's dig ourselves a trench. We might build ourselves a wall too, but what we very much need is something that'll trap us some enemies. Zombie flesh will likely be our first source of food. Bones will help grow our trees. But we're probably going to want some way of disposing of the creepers. Because they are not going to die in the sunshine. Dig, 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 dig. Um, you likely don't want to just watch me dig, so let's talk about what's included in this pack. We've definitely got big reactors coming. That's a uh, fantastic source of power. We've got Bibliocraft, which is fun for making things look a uh, particular way. I've done a tutorial on making various secret type passages using Applied Energistics in Bibliocraft. Applied Energistics is in this pack, so you can certainly expect me to have at least one of those somewhere during my time. But then again, that's if I survive. This is a hardcore map, so if I die, it's going to delete my world. So that's why this uh, fortification effort needs to be rigorous. Okay, we don't want water coming in here, but it appears that is not going to make it over to here, so that's good. Okay, so we've got ourselves a trench. We're going to need a way back up for ourselves, but we don't want the monsters to be able to get there. Nice little stairway there, so we can get up top to scope out how else the monsters can get up here. We do not want anything but spiders to be able to get to us. There's no keeping out spiders. Not really. Not without completely boxing yourself in. And let's see about just getting this as secure as we can make it. Uh, let's see. With the sieves, we definitely have X Nilo. 
gets you your resources from out of nothing. Well, not so much nothing as uh, taking dust and getting anything that you need from that. Uh, let's see. Instead of digging all of this down, I think it might be better to build a wall. Yeah, that's probably a better plan. It doesn't have to be a great wall. It just needs to keep things away from us. At least for this first night. We can come back out tomorrow and hopefully we won't have three dozen creepers out here waiting for us. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so this lifts up some more, build the wall up some more. Where do we want it on this side? How about more or less parallel to what we've got over there? Doesn't have to be symmetric, we just need to survive. Not sure why I built that over there. It needs to link up with this wall here. Okay, so from here, I can get up here. But they will not be able to climb in. Do not want any creepers falling on our heads. Okay, so we've got ourselves a pit, we've got ourselves a wall. We've got ourselves quite a bit of dust, but I have a feeling we're going to want more dust than that. So let's... that was embarrassing. Okay, so let's collect some dust while the sun shines. Because this will have all the things we need. It'll have the bone meals, bone meal for the trees, it'll have... Um, the various metallic dusts. It'll have redstone, glowstone, just about everything really. Um, it won't get us dirt, but it will get us stone, and stone is very important because without that we can't make a furnace. No furnace, no coal, no coal, no light. I suppose if we get enough glowstone dust we can make some glowstone, but I don't think it's common enough for that to really be effective. It would be nice if we could plant a tree and get that harvested before nighttime, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, dust does fall like sand, so building structures out of it is relatively unwise. Let's see, what other mods are we looking forward to? There's Redstone Arsenal. I haven't really done anything with that, but you can use power with your tools. Um, and since it's Redstone Flux, that means there's Thermal Expansion. has all the machines you could really want, except for the um, downright cheaty ones from uh, MFR. Uh, Mine Factory Reloaded has some of the most amazing machines that make the game way too easy. You've got auto spawners, so if you catch something in a net, you can make as many of them as you want. Uh, so if you find a single blaze, you can make yourself a blaze farm. Now, I don't know if x in this has the dolls that let you summon endermen and blazes, but I also don't know whether or not it's got the absurdly dangerous nether that Agrarian Skies had. That place was just bananas! Then again, if you can fly with the jetpacks, it's not quite as bad. Uh, the jetpacks mod is in this as well, so eventually we'll be flying around at our leisure. And I believe we might be wasting our hunger collecting all of this dust. Because we're not going to have a really abundant food source for a while. At least not until we can grow some trees. And the sun appears to be about to set, so let's hightail it into our base here. Um, actually, 
let's set up a little wall around here such that when day breaks we can drop some dust on some creepers because the creepers will likely end up oh but if it's three tall i don't know if they'll drop in so that wall might not be the best plan We could build a wall on the inside, but it would protect us from skeletons. Oh, we need to leave that there. Because we don't want any water in here, because that'll keep the uh, mobs from uh, burning up in the daylight. So let's... Oh, here come the hordes. And there's a red creeper. Oh, lovely. And that skeleton looked like he was going to burgle me. Okie doke. There's some interesting mobs in this uh, particular pack. So in the meantime, let's eat ourselves some jerky. Okay. And let's go back and talk to Impa now that we've got some time. Hello and welcome. I am IMPA. Or to be more precise, Intelligent Multipurpose Assistant. I'm here to aid and guide you in surviving on this hot, dusty planet. The good news is you seem to have survived the crash landing fine. The bad news is that the shuttle most definitely did not. You are stuck here for the foreseeable future. Speaking of which, you might want to get started get setting up camp. Gather what supplies are left in the wreck and then see about finding water. It's mighty dry out there. Okay, so basic survival. What has gone before? If you don't care about the backstory, you can ignore this safely. I kind of care. I'm probably not going to get out there 700 meters away just yet. You lost your data tablet in the crash. It contains, among other things, all your personal logs. However, you see something glinting out in the sun near the shuttle. Check it out. That's not near the shuttle. That's a long way off. Okay, so for jerky, gonna need salt, which we're gonna get from our dust. We're probably gonna need some zombie flesh from the fellas outside. Bone meal, we're gonna get from bone meal. As part of my functions, I can replicate needed items if provided with the raw materials. My capacity is limited at this point, so I can't provide much. Sift some of the dust to get bone meal. With that, one dust and a bottle of water, I can provide you an essential survival material. So we give it dust, bone meal, and water. It'll give us some dirt, bone meal, and water. Oh, okay, nope. That's not hard. We just come over to our sieve, push some dust through it, and eventually we'll get some interesting things. And there we've got some bone meal. Easy peasy. Manual submit. Get our stuff. Now there is not enough room in here for planting a tree. So, let's put some stuff away. Okay, so, let's put the camel pack in there, fill it back up. And there's a lot of mobs out there. And a couple fell in here. Hello. Um, so we're going to need to do quite a bit with this sieve. Okay, so we've got hard mode and easy mode. This is hardcore, so if I die, uh, the uh, world gets deleted. But I'm still going to take the hard route. I figured that'll be more entertaining overall, and, well, I like a challenge. We'll see how that goes. If I die, I die. I can start over. So let's select the hard route. Gives us some saplings and some bone meal. Um, so we'll be able to get some wood. We can take the saplings and turn them into dirt. We just need to be rather conservative with our food and our water. So we need to not do anything too taxing. Uh, we've got two of these quest books, so let's put one of them back on the shelf over here. We've got the standard starting books here, so we can get into Tinker's Construct. Uh, Open Blocks always has fun stuff. 
so let's see what else we need to be doing. Stone hammer and a bone crook, so we can wait until daytime for the crook. Drinking mud, dirty water bottle. Water is scarce. In a pinch, you can get water from dirt. One bottle and one dirt, and there you go. It isn't very healthy, but if you don't have a choice. So, if I find a dirty water bottle, I can separate them. That seems a little strange. And it hasn't told us how to make the dirt yet, so that's a little on the odd side. Sapping the sap. I found a way to get to... Uh, I have found a way to get water. If you drop saplings in the liquid transposer, you'll get a little bit of water from them. One tenth of a bucket. Remember, you can power the transposers with the flux capacitors in your emergency supply chest. Make sure you do not use uh, all of your saplings. Well, yeah, because you're never getting any more. Wonder if that's true. Interesting. So you put leaves into a transposer, and you get water and a sapling. That's uh. I'm not sure what this five percent means. Is that five percent of this capacity? Hmm. We'll have to check on that. Well, yeah, because that's two buckets, so yeah, that's 5% of the capacity. I was wondering if it was 5% chance of getting a sapling. So that means if we manage to get ourselves some shears, that would be amazing. Okay, so while those guys are making a racket, we should probably get stuff from this dust, because there should be stone in here. And stone we need for that hammer, but we also need for a furnace. Because with the furnace, we could smelt up uh, this iron and then get some shears to get all those leaves, which will give us tons and tons of saplings. Uh, let's see. That's copper. Iron. So we need to make sure we get enough iron. Uh, we should probably keep an eye on the stone, too. We're going to need a lot of that, because you need uh, eight slabs to make a slab furnace, uh, which means you need six stone, and stone comes from four of those little stones. So that's six times four, you need 24 of those little pebbles. I'm not sure I've got enough dust for that. Um, eventually we'll need that hammer because that'll break the cobblestone down into... Um, what will it break the cobblestone down into? Gravel. And then the gravel turns into dust, uh, sand, and then the sand turns into dust, but you never need to go that far here. There's dust everywhere. Uh, that is, of course, if x Nilo works the same way here as it does in Agrarian Skies. But you never know what sort of little tweaks they're gonna do to these things between the mod packs, because Guardian Skies very much didn't have that thirst and temperature meter down in the left. Uh, that camel pack has been doing a pretty good job of keeping me hydrated, and staying hydrated helps you regulate your temperature, because right now it is really cold outside. You can see with the uh, two black dots down near the blue, that's saying how cold it is, and the white dot is showing how cold I am. If you go too far below, 35, you start to get hypothermia and frostbite. If you get up into 38, you start sweating. Too much higher than that, you get heat stroke, and man, is that bad news. And it sounds like they're falling victim to that outside right now. So, a little sorry for that noise. The sound can only go down so far before you can't hear me doing anything. And, uh, in this particular setup, I can't just turn down the mob volumes. And they seem to be dying at a pretty good clip. And since that's the end of day one, that should be the end of this episode. So let's see what we've got. We've got two cobblestone worth of stones, quite a few dusts that don't do us any good without a furnace. Um, does make me wonder, can you cook with blaze powder? 
Find out next time on Crash Landing with Light.